Taurus, I am Mary Trimble, your astrologer and tarot card reader, here with your reading for January the 13th through the 19th. This is for Taurus. What wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings, and helpful information can you give Taurus for the week of January the 13th through the 19th, 2020? Okay. Three cards for Taurus, please. Three cards. Oh, there's one, two, oh, two, three. Wow, they're flying out for you this week. Taurus, let's see what's going on. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Now we have the clarifying cards for Taurus. This is for Taurus. What wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings, and helpful information can you give Taurus through these clarifying cards? For the week of January the 13th to the 19th, 2020. What a celestial sky we have. Guys, right after this um, is the astro astrological report. So check that out. Stay on to listen to that. Okay. Please clarify. Oh, there you go. Okay. Please clarify. There you go. And please clarify. Oh, oh, too many. Oh, wow, too many fell out there, like the whole pack. <laughs> please clarify. Okay, let's take a look at your cards, Taurus, shall we? Hang on, here we go. Okay, the first card out for you is the tower, followed by the seven of wands. Then you have two cards together. You have the sun and you have the empress. Is that the empress? Yes. Clarified by the queen of swords. Then you have the Nine of Pentacles, clarified by the Judgment card. Very, very interesting. Guys, this is for the collective. I just want to remind you, um, so it's also for your sun, moon, and rising, and the uh, links to the other videos will be below in the Show More section, so check them out. The first card out for you is the Tower. Look, nobody likes the tower, but it's also Uranus, right? So Uranus is, you know, there's a lot happening with Uranus this week. Um, we have Mercury moving into Aquarius, and Qua Aquarius is ruled by Mercury. Um, and Mercury is lightning, it's sudden happenings. It's, I want to say that's like that song, it's thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening. It can be surprises and it can be shocking. This, the tower comes in when something needs to change, when the status quo needs to be shaken up and perhaps you've been complacent and you've been kind of, you know, coasting along and Uranus comes in and lights a fire under your bum, darling. <laughs> it gets you in action. It, you know, it's like shaking up the energy. Things, whatever this is, needs to go. Now, this can be a job. This can be you know, look, you could have been on unemployment and you've got, and, you, and it runs out and you've got to get a job. <laughs> you know, it could be that uh, you're lo you have to move apartments, you know, or houses or, you know, cities or something is coming in and it is a major life-changing event usually. Now, clarifying it is the seven of wands. Well, oh my goodness, this is also revolutionary uh, energy. It's all about standing up, you know, for what's right. Wow. This could be, you know, demonstrations and protests and things like that. It can be very that wherever you are in the world. You know, this, this, this goes out globally. So, um, you know, this can be the fire in Australia, right? Um, uh, you know, this can be, it can be a, 
an event that changes your life going forward. And the seven of ones is about standing up for what's right. So it's really interesting that that came up. This is about, you know, uh, standing up for the underdog, standing up for, look, I usually use a jury when I when I describe this card. So say you've been on a jury for about a week or two weeks and it's been a long, you know, process and it's Friday and you have to you have to uh, come up with a verdict. It's the end of the the end of the trial and now the jury has to go in and deliberate. And um everybody's deliberating and they're all saying guilty, 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 guilty. And you, in your heart of hearts, look, you, nobody wants to be sequestered. Nobody wants to stay over the weekend. And so they're all like rushing to get this, you know, this, uh, this judgment in. And, uh, you're, you have this feeling in your heart. You're like, God, this, you know, look, there's a, you know, there's a, there's an element of doubt here. I'm not sure you know, I can't. So you stand up even when it feels uncomfortable. Now that's very uncomfortable. You don't want to be sequestered. You don't want to stay overnight. You don't want to stay over the weekend. You know, you want to go home too, but you can't compromise your values for personal preferences. And that's what this is. This is also fighting for what's yours. And it's not in a dogmatic way because this person He's above, but he's coming from a higher perspective. It's like coming from um, your higher self, right? From a spiritual place, and and it it's really about um, you know saying I understand how why you feel that way. However, I feel this because of this, this, and this. It's about being calm. It's about putting your um, view forward in a very quiet and calm way because people don't hear shouting do they they hear calmness it's like really good politicians are very calm and um because then they're heard the people hear them when somebody's calm and they're even toned they seem rational and sane right um so this is coming from a very you know higher octave if you will so stand stand up for the underdog and fight for what is right for you and for the collective, right? What you know is don't compromise your values, period. That's what I'll say. <laughs> so then you have the sun. And I want to sing that song, the sun has to get sat on. <laughs> I'll lose all my views. I can't help myself. I'm incorrigible. But the, this, look, this this is beautiful. It's a little child riding a white horse, which is purity. It's like energy. And this is really about cr creativity. It's about you. Um, and we've got some really, stay around for the astrological report because there's some really, it'll really illustrate um, some things for you. We have the sun conjunct uh, Pluto and Saturn uh, coming up on Monday. So there's lots of things that you can find out. Anyway, so the sun is all about energy. It's about ego. It's about us. It's about what we put out into the world. It's about our inner child. Sometimes when this card comes out, it's saying, you know, allow your inner child to come out and play. You know, let them come out into the sunshine and play. And my goodness, this is New York. And we had 60 degrees today, Fahrenheit. It was like a summer's day. I went for a lovely bike ride with my doggy. We had a great time. So this is like beautiful. This is an auspicious card. This is like the sun is shining on you. And look at this right next to it is the Empress. And I think of you when I, when I think of the Empress, because the Empress is Gaia. She's, you know, the goddess of the earth you're an earth sign right you are also going to feel the aspect that's happening on monday too venus your ruling planet is moving into pisces where it can be it's exalted in pisces so um you're going to feel that energy. You're going to feel like, you know, more tactile. You're going to feel like you want to be pampered. You're going to feel like, you know, make me feel good, people. It's more receptive, right? 
Um, she is pregnant with ideas. This is also Uranus energy, right? In a way, because we get these brilliant ideas, right? It's very innovative ideas. She's creative. She's, she's pregnant with creative ideas. She's about manifesting abundance on, you know, in this physical plane. And you have Uranus in your sign, traveling through your sign right now. So you know those, you know, surprises on shocks, ups and downs. Things are, things have been very up and down for you and will be for the next, what, six years or so with Uranus traveling through your sign. Um, so great successes and also sometimes very stressful um lows too. Um, but this is all about channeling your energy into creating something wonderful, right? Figure, uh, focus on creativity, because that is what will bring you joy. Now, clarifying it is the Queen of Swords, and she is the ultimate businesswoman. The Queen of Swords is this incredible intellect. She's the truth seeker. She tells the truth. <laughs> My God, does she tell the truth? She's incredible. She's intellectual. She is smart. She can see through to a person's soul, not because she's intuitive, but because she has studied humans. She can, she knows when someone's being authentic and when they're not. She knows when they're lying and when they're not. She just is so sharp. This woman is so sharp. And men are attracted to her. She's very, she's very beautiful. Um, but they don't stay around too long because she, <laughs> she's brutally honest. <laughs> she just says things, you know, she's very blah, and um and offends people. She's very cutting. <laughs> she's the queen of swords. <laughs> She'll cut you to threads verbally. She'll eviscerate you, uh, you know, with her tongue. So this is, look, are you the queen of swords? <laughs> if you are embodying the queen of swords, then you need to kind of soften the way you communicate and perhaps not be so... Uh, cutting and offensive, you know, watch your tones, bring your tones down. Um, but if the Queen of Swords is coming into you and you are, you've, you know, she's said something to you and it's like, uh, step back and don't react. And it's like, take some, whatever she's saying, there is truth in it for sure because the queen of swords doesn't say anything unless she's she's telling it like like it is now her intention isn't to harm you you know of course unless you're crossing her and then she'll eviscerate you <laughs> but um her intention on the whole is not to hurt she's just telling you the truth she's helping you by telling you the truth she it feels that she's you know you need to hear this to 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 move on and to be successful so you're being asked not to react to this and step back and take what, look, own what you can. Take it in and say, okay, what part of this, what do I need to look at? What part of this is the truth? And this energy, Pluto and Saturn and everything in Capricorn, we need to, uh, this is a wonderful opportunity, should I say. It's a lovely cauldron in which for us to deep, you know, go deep and to really look at ourselves. What can we change? What is our dark side? We can embrace our dark side, but we also don't want we want to be aware that we have our dark, our dark side. Some people aren't even aware of that. We need to acknowledge that. And we need to look at areas in which we can change because this is about changing. This All this energy is about transforming ourselves. It's about coming out of this completely different. So that's um, an opportunity for you to do that. Now, the next card out is the nine of uh, pentacles. I just thought about something else here, but I'll come back to this in a second. Um, now, the nine of pentacles is about opulence. It's about, look, it's about having everything you need. Uh, 
materially. This is about reaching to, you know, you're very happy with where you're at right now. You've got what you need. You've got, you know, you've got like something to back you up. You're feeling secure. It's a very secure feeling. Somebody who's worked very hard and just accumulated enough money to live kind of richly. The thing about this card is that this person has worked to the detriment of her friends and family because guess what? She's standing there alone. She's not able to share it with people because she's kind of just focused on that. And let's face it, Taurus, you can do that. You have that um, tendency within you to just focus on creating security and nothing is enough. You have to, re you work hard. I'm not saying you don't work hard. You work very hard at hard ac accumulating well so that you can feel secure. The, the problem with that is, is that you really need to balance. You need to balance your work with your home because you could end up alone. And that's what this card is saying. Yes, you will end up with the riches that you so desire, but be careful. Make sure that you put some time aside for your loved ones because you need to balance that or you'll wake up alone one day. Clarifying that is the wake up call card. This is Pluto coming in right? This is Pluto bringing stuff up that you need to look at. This is karmic energy. What are you doing that is hurting others and yourself, ultimately yourself? Uh, because when we hurt others, we hurt ourselves. So it's something that you are being called to take a look at. But, you know, listen, Pluto's coming in, whether we like it or not. It's the transformation. So this is your opportunity to transform your life. This is an amazing, uh, this is an amazing week for you, I would say. Um, perhaps not easy, but really great if you take it on. If you take that change on, it's actually empowering. It will give you that personal power. Um, that's really happening this week. Stay, stick around for the uh, astrology report. I highly recommend it. It's right after this. Okay, Taurus, thank you. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And check out the astrology report next. Hello, and thank you for sticking around for the astrology report and to see what's happening in the celestial sky this week, the week of... January the 13th through the 19th. And we start, let me put my glass on, I have to look at my notes. We start with Monday the 13th, the Sun conjuncts Pluto in Capricorn at 8.16 a.m. That's Eastern Standard Time, by the way, folks. Um, look, this is about personal power and the ability to influence others in, in a way that's beneficial to you. Now, this can lead to power struggles, however, and it really depends on where this conjunction lies in your chart um, as to how it will play out in your life. For instance, Aries, um, it will happen in the, in the 10th house, the house of career, of status, of how you're viewed in the public arena. This is about career and work. And um, so this will play out in that aspect. So there may be some kind of power dynamic going on at work for Aries. Now, where it lands in your chart, uh, depicts where it's going to happen for you in which area. So this aspect will give you insights into your behavioral patterns and you can address any kind of self-destructive behaviors. It's really about going deep and looking at your shadow side and the dark and more sinister side of life as a whole. This aspect as well can focus things like stalking and spying on your you know, co-workers, lovers, friends, um, resist the urge. You know, I say to my clients, don't look at their emails, don't look in their wallet. You know, if you suspect uh, your partner of cheating, then address them directly. Don't 
surreptitiously go around and spy on them, respect their privacy. You know, it's not okay to do that. And it doesn't feel good. And, you know, you, you'll probably find something. We can all find something. So don't look. It's, I say that's dialing 1-800-PAIN. Don't do it. Um, now, this is also a fabulous opportunity to declutter, to clear out uh, you know, debris and, and things that you no longer need. This is about streamlining in Capricorn. We need to economize. We need to look at, you know, that it'll help us actually look at our behaviors by, you know, are, are these, look, when I, this is what happened to me when I went into my closet, this was a couple of years ago. I looked at it and I was clearing it out and there was tons of stuff with labels on. There were hundreds of pairs of shoes that I hadn't worn and I, I won't wear because there's great, you know, they're like six inch heels or something. So it really made me look at that sickness. You know, are we over consuming? We have to kind of streamline, right? We need to streamline. We need to look at, you know, only use things or keep things that we need that not as opposed to what we want. What do we need as opposed to what we want? That's what we need to look at here. And this is a wonderful opportunity to do that. And it's also a good opportunity to see which relationships are working. We need to be in relationships or surrounded by people who will lift us up. If someone's putting you down or you're in their company and you don't feel good about yourself, then let that relationship go. And it doesn't have to be a big dramatic, I'm never talking to you again. You know, you can slowly, I always think of, uh, you know, that old movie with, uh, with Dracula in, and he seems to just roll back. <laughs> you can just roll back from your friends. I mean, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity to do this. The thing is with, you know, it's, ch this is about change. There's, I, there's no bones about it. It is about change and there's nothing I can say that's going to change that. Um, but what we can do is we can work with the energies that are available to us. We can ride the crest of the wave. Let's co-create and ride the crest of the wave. And that's how we can navigate through these difficult, or, you know, uh, choppy waters, as we say. Now, look, on the same day, a bit later on, it's only like two hours later, less, yeah, exactly two hours later, the sun conjuncts Saturn. So this energy is all kind of, it's really the sun conjuncting Saturn and, Pluto, and Pluto, right? Conjunction, because they've just uh, conjunct the day before right? On Sunday, I'm actually recording this before that happens. <laughs> so this is Saturday. Um, I'm recording this, but so, uh, Saturn, the Saturn conjunction, um, this is a karmic conjunction. Uh, and look, this is about, this could bring great rewards for you. Um, and success for those who've worked really hard and diligently throughout the past year. If you have let things go and not stood up to, you know, not taking care of your responsibilities, that might come and slap you in the face and things could fall apart. That's why I said it's kind of karmic, right? Um, so it can be, this can mean great success or overwhelming hardships. You know, it really kind of depends on what you've been doing this last year. Now, this is also about playing by the rules. Saturn is, you know, the car the lord of karma. He's like, you know, government. He's the boss. He's the father figure. Um, so the hierarchy, this, you know, he's rules, regulation, structure. So you want to play by the rules. Um, it's also going to kind of feel like you're taking one step forward and then two steps back. You feel like you're treading water and you can't get ahead. Now, don't get discouraged. Saturn slows us down, you know, for a reason. 
Uh, it's sometimes to show us signposts for perhaps a better way round. It may take longer. It might be the scenic route. It might be a safer route that gets you there. Have you ever, you know, when you, some people, you know, there's been a plane crash and some people said, you know, I missed that plane. I was supposed to get on it and I didn't. And, you know, that's, you know, that can be Saturn stopping you from getting on there. Um, but it can also work the other way. It can, it, you can make mistakes and you can have accidents as well. So you have to, you know, during this time, don't do anything that's dangerous. Don't do anything that's risque. Uh, you know, be safe, be safe. Uh, now the sun wants to go, go, go. It's all energy. So and and Saturn wants to go slow, slow, slow. <laughs> Saturn wants everything done with expertise. You will need to practice patience and tolerance to navigate through this transit. Um, so there's a lot going on, right? So now I haven't finished because it, that day, even a little bit later, like three hours later, Venus moves into Pisces. Now, whenever a planet moves into another sign, there's a huge shift in energy. And this Venus is exalted in, Pi in Pisces. She can really stretch her wings and she can really express herself in Pisces. So, you know, we may be drawn to romance, love, passion, affection, you know, we may be more demonstrative and and feel attracted and be want to be touchy feely kind of things with people or we want to receive you know massages it's it's a wonderful time to pamper yourself get a massage get a foot massage you know whatever it is do something that makes you feel pampered and beautiful um and it's also a, this is a great placement but it's also really good for finances um so honor the divine feminine within and we so need that because we have all this yang energy all this outward energy so we need to kind of go in we need to be receptive we need to receive that love darling give me your love <laughs> this is a harmonious flowing energy it's good vibes all the way around so now on thursday we'll jump forward to thursday and thursday january the 16th mercury right, moves into Aquarius. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. I won't go on, don't go. <laughs> I have been known to burst into song on occasion. A lot. Anyway, so this really is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. We are feeling that Aquarian energy. Mercury enjoys being in Aquarius, because it gives Mercury the freedom to contemplate complex subjects with unusual insight. Now, under this influence, you can deliberate matters with an unconventional approach. It's kind of like thinking outside the box. Uh, you may find your focus directed towards humanitarianism, you know, groups and community and your tribe, like minded people. That's what's going to really kind of uh, make you feel fulfilled. And that's very Aquarian, right? That's Aquarian in nature. Um, it's a good time to volunteer or join a group. And having said that, I have a Facebook group. It is Live in the Solution Astrology. And I we have so much fun there. And it's so beautiful. It's a private group. You have to ask for uh, you know, to join. And, and the description, sorry, the link to that will be in the description box below. And it's such a lovely community. It's so positive and uplifting. And every two weeks I do a live stream just in that group. And I look at either the full moon or the new moon and whoever attends, whomever attends, I go through their chart, not their per personal chart, but their horoscope, their sign. And we look at how the sign is a, is going to receive the energy from either the full moon or the uh, new moon. And then I also have my tarot cards on hand and answer questions there. We have a really good time there. So that's lovely. Come and join my, the, what a perfect time to join, <laughs> to join the group. 
How amazing is that? Um, you know, it's like connect with the collective and um, and feel love and feel that unity. Well, it's about getting back to oneness, isn't it? Reminding us that we are all one. Now, on Saturday, January the 18th, Mercury squares Uranus. Now, Uranus rules Aquarius. Now, Mercury is in Aquarius and it is going to square Aquarius's ruler, which happens to be in uh, Taurus. So, this is a square going on. And uh, look, this can be shocking news or information that could affect your daily routines. You you just may have to spring into action um, at this you know at the click of a finger. Um, it can be exciting for some and disconcerting for others. It just depends um, on what's going on with your own chart. With this transit, miscommunication can occur. So we have to make sure that you are not sending a text or an email to the wrong person. I've done that so many times. <laughs> you know, really, really kind of pay attention to that. Really pay, pay attention to details. Whatever you say can be misconstrued. People can take things personally and vice versa. You can take things personally uh, when somebody says something and it, that might not be the intent, but that is the general kind of energy going forward. So, you know, it look, as a result of that, it's really prudent to avoid kind of important meetings like interviews or something like that during this transit, because you may be, you, things may be taken out of context. So you don't, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to push the envelope there. On the upside, you know, you could get brilliant ideas coming to you out of nowhere. Have a pen and paper handy at all times so you can write them down because they'll be coming fast and furious and they could just disappear. Now, I do want to mention uh, Aquarian energy because and, and Uranus because Uranus rules uh Aquarius. It's very innovative. So we do get these incredible ideas and, and we're already seeing it playing out in the world. We're, we are coming up with this, these incredible inventions, innovative ideas and travel. I just saw, look, I didn't read the article, I'm going to confess, but I did see the headlines of uh, a plane that can get from New York to London in just over an hour. Darling, it will arrive four hours before it left <laughs> because of the time frame. I mean, fabulous, incredible things like that. The only the the uh, the downside of this can be that um, the technology can disengage us personally. So it can it can be like uh, you can experience uh, virtual reality. You can experience nature and, uh, and other beautiful things through virtual reality, right? But we really need to connect with nature physically. It's very important for us to, you know, go barefoot in the soil, you know, feel, you know, Mother Earth and Gaia so that we can heal the earth and the earth can heal us. So there's that, um, there's that danger of being detached through technology. So we have to be aware of that. Technology is incredible and wonderful. Look, I went shopping last night and I drove my car all the way there and I realized I left my wallet at home. And I was, I, you know, I, I, I'd got the cart, I was in the shop, I left. And then all of a sudden I remembered that I had Apple Pay on my phone. <laughs> So I went shopping anyway. I mean, how fabulous, right? Technology is amazing. Um, so guys, I want to thank you for staying all the way to the end. And I'd just like to mention this channel is viewer supported only. So um, there are ways to, of course, thanking, liking, um, uh, commenting and subscribing is wonderful. And I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, but another way to support me is through my Patreon page. And check on this link here because um, I post things on Patreon that I don't post anywhere else. And I release these reports written on there uh, before 
Oh, I've just started to do that actually before I record them because I always write them first anyway. So I figured that would be really nice for my patrons to get it in written form before, you know, with a visual, obviously, um, before they before they go out into the world. So they get, you know, they get, and there's different tiers and they get different um there are different reward systems. But you can be a supporter for as little as a dollar a month. That's $12 a year. It's not a lot for you, but I can do a whole lot with that. Um, so that would be wonderful if you can. If you can't, don't worry. You know, no pressure, guys. You know, I just would like to put out, I've got so many brilliant ideas, you know, <laughs> this Aquarian energy. And I really want to do so many more creative things, but I'm kind of a bit restricted with what I have right here. Um, um, but um, that's okay. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your support, your interaction, your lovely comments, your love. And, um, and I love you all. And I'll see you next week. Oh.